guys welcome back to another video so today we'll be starting module 2 of antenna wave progression so today we'll be discussing about the retarded potential of an antenna so what basically is the retarded potential of an antenna let's find out so in the previous sessions we saw what an antenna is an antenna is basically but a metallical device that can transmit radio electromagnetic waves. So, towards the end of this session, you guys will have a clear understanding of what the retarded potential of a particular antenna is. So first, let us consider a particular conductor. So let this be the particular conductor and now let us assume that a particular current I is flowing through this conductor. So now if a particular current I is flowing through this conductor, let the current per unit volume that is the current density be represented as J. So the current density is written as J. So now, for observation purpose, let us consider a small volume, that is a small differential volume of this particular conductor as follows. So now, let this be a small differential volume for mere observation purpose. So now, because of this current, there would be charges flowing through this particular conductor. So now, let the charge per unit volume, that is the charge density, be represented as rho V. So the charge density is given as rho V. So now, let us assume this zero as the origin of the entire system. So now let this source volume, that is the small differential volume that we have assumed as a source for our observation be represented by a vector r dash with respect to the origin. And now for observation purpose, we need a point of observation where we can observe the characteristics. So let us take x as this point of observation and let this x be represented by a vector r with respect to the origin. And let this r be the distance between the point of observation and the point of source. That is the small differential volume that we have considered in this current carrying conductor. So in this system, the observation is done at this point x where we will find the potential. So now it is observed that at this point x, two kinds of potentials are observed. One potential happens due to the magnetic field and the other potential happens due to the electric field produced. And therefore, as a result of this, two kinds of potentials are observed at this point x. So, let us see both the cases. So, first, let us assume the potential due to the magnetic field. So, here in this case, we have assumed the current to move in an upward direction. So, according to the right hand thumb rule, if we point the thumb in the position of the direction of flow of current, then it is found that the magnetic field is towards the direction inwards of the plane of this particular board and therefore the magnetic field acts in this direction that is into the plane of the board and that is the direction of the magnetic field and hence as a result of this as the magnetic field has got a particular direction we get a vector magnetic potential due to this particular magnetic field so in other words the potential due to this magnetic field is a vector magnetic potential so this vector magnetic potential is given as let us take m as the vector magnetic potential then the vector magnetic potential is given as m is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi integral of the current density j with divided by r the whole integrated with respect to volume so therefore, this is the vector magnetic potential that is observed at this point x. So now, since we have assumed the current to move in the upward direction, we can now observe that the electric field due to this current would be in this direction. That is, the electric field would act outwards of this conductor. That is, if it is this 
if this is the particular conductor and the electric field would be moving outwards in all the directions of this conductor and therefore we can say that there is no specific direction for the electric field as electric field moves outwards in all the direction and therefore the potential due to this electric field is not a vector quantity it is a scalar quantity so therefore the expression for the scalar electric potential is given as v is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 integral of the charge volume charge density divided by the distance r the whole integrated with respect to volume this is the scalar electric potential observed at the point x so now here we saw the case when a particular direct current or a particular constant current is applied to the end of a particular conductor so what happens when an alternative current is passed to this conductor an alternative current is a current that continuously changes its value that is it increases and decreases with respect to time and therefore what happens when an alternative current is passed to this conductor so when an alternative current is passed the value of current varies with respect to time and therefore it is observed that when the value of current varies the field also varies that is both the electric as well as the magnetic field is also observed to vary with respect to time so hence as a result of this certain modifications are required for this equations because these equations are for a conductor carrying a current which is constant and it does not change with respect to time so when it changes with respect to time certain modifications are required for these equations so we saw that as the current varies both the electric as well as the magnetic field they also vary and because of this the effect of both this magnetic as well as electric field is observed at this point only after a particular propagation time only after a particular finite propagation time the effects of this particular magnetic as well as the electric field is observed at this point of observation thus the particular vector magnetic potential at a distance r due to this particular current density j at a time t is given by the expression m is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi integral of j as a function of distance and time divided by r the whole integrated with respect to volume so here what happens is that the particular current density j is represented as a function of distance and time so here the time is written as t minus r by c where r is the distance between this small differential volume and the point of observation and c is nothing but the velocity of light that is the velocity with which these electric field or magnetic field propagates so c is the velocity of light so similarly in the case of scalar electric potential we can write this expression as v is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 integral of the volume charge density rho v as the function of distance and time the whole divided by r integrated with respect to the volume as simple as that so in these equations we can see that there is a particular delay by a factor of r by c in time thus these potentials have found to be delayed or retarded by a factor of r by c r by c r by c this thus my friends is the retarded potential of a particular antenna as simple as that so summing up when an alternative current is passed through a particular conductor the both the magnetic as well as the electric field produced by this conductor varies with respect to time and therefore as a result of this the current density as well as the charge density is written as a function of distance as well as time here when we represent it as a function of distance as well as time a particular time delay of r by c is found and therefore as a result of this the particular potential is found to be delayed by a factor of r by c and therefore this potential is referred to as the retarded potential of a particular antenna 
So I hope you guys have understood what the retarded potential of an antenna is and we will be discussing more into this module in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned and thank you.